Hey friends, greetings from the Golan Ranch Studios, FAI's film production studios here in the north of Israel in the Golan Heights. My name is Dalton Thomas. I want to take the next uh, 10 minutes or so to give some announcements to you concerning the details of the release of our new film, Ballads of the Exodus, but also to announce some things that we're very excited about concerning the 10, 20, 30 year vision, should the Lord tarry, of FAI Studios film production roadmap ahead. Ballads of the Exodus will be our first film that's going to be released in what is called a Trinity Vision Roadshow format. What I want to do now is cast some vision for this Trinity Vision Roadshow format, explain what it is and why and how it informs and is influencing and is underpinning the long-term vision and trajectory of FAI. Now, when we started FAI, we always knew that film would be a major part of FAI. It would never become the main thing. It would never become the only thing. It was not the tip of the spear, but it is our messaging mechanism. And the Lord instructed us at the beginning to take it seriously, to learn it, to give attention to it, to really hone the craft of it, because I do believe it is the most powerful messaging mechanism on the earth today. I'm a Bible teacher and preacher. I love teaching and preaching. I, I'm an author. I love writing. I believe in different mediums of communication. I believe in art and music, painting, drawing. I love all these different mediums, but I believe film is the consummate medium to convey the greatest stories ever told. It's the greatest platform to convey the greatest stories ever told. Over the next 10 to 20 years, we have a roadmap of feature films. We're going to be releasing two to four feature films a year over the next decade, should the Lord tarry. And these films are going to be released in Trinity Vision formats and released in a roadshow screening premiere event format. And I want to explain both of those to you. The Trinity Vision format and the roadshow premiere release format and how the two relate and why they're significant to, significant to us uh, as the producers of these films, the writers of these films, those who are making these films and releasing them into the wild. Now, uh, before I get to that, I just want to reiterate the fact and the, the thing that we have a lot of zeal over. Film is a tool that we use to walk out our local, regional, and international mandate as the FAI family of laying foundations where there are none. You know, we don't care about making film because we care about film. We love film because of the power of it as a medium and how it rises the tide that lifts a bunch of other boats within the Great Commission ecosystem in terms of advocacy, in terms of theology, in terms of inspiration. There's a thousand, it's like the one stone that kills a, a, a thousand birds by throwing it at, pardon the expression of killing birds with stones, but you know what I mean. So let's talk, let's start with Trinity Vision format, and then we're going to look at the roadshow format. I want to explain what this is, because this is how Ballads of the Exodus is going to be released. Now, our next films are not ballads films. They're they're feature films, conventional, traditional feature films, but they're not traditional or conventional in other ways, namely the way that they're going to be released. We're going to be releasing all of these films for free on the FAI app, but we're going to be releasing them first in global roadshow premiere experience events. Now, this would have happened for Ballads of the Exodus if it wasn't for the COVID debacle. Our next film, which is about to start production in about two weeks, will be released in that format, and we're going to take it on a Capital Cities premiere tour, a roadshow tour around the world, and screening tour before it goes live on the FAI app for free and forever. So what is Trinity Vision format? Why does it matter? Technically speaking, Trinity Vision format is an extremely wide format of film which explains the roadshow, the need for a roadshow format. Meaning, these films are not intended to be viewed by yourself on an iPhone in your bed while you're eating ice cream and you're bored and you're just looking for something to numb you and escape from the, uh, the realities that you live. Which, more often than not, that's what TV and Netflix and Amazon and, and, and is. It's just an, it's a shot of something to anesthetize us. These films are not that. We don't want to make entertainment. We want to make something that's not meant to entertain, but that is, some, is intended to do something else altogether. Will it be entertaining? Yes, for sure, but that's not the goal of it. 
technically speaking, these films are shot in a 3.33 to 1 ratio. Now you, you say, oh no, Dalton's bringing up numbers. I'm, I'm turning this off. Hold on. I hate numbers too, but this is relevant. At the birth of film and cinema in the silent film era in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, the aspect ratio of film was 4 by 3 because it was a 35 millimeter film strip that was 4 by 3 inches. So it was a square. It looked like this. Where my hands are now is about the width of the screen. Now as time went on, television would be introduced around the same time that film was beginning to really get its momentum. Now as film continued to have momentum in its 4x3 format, television was created in a 4x3 format. And then something significant happened in the 1950s. In the 1950s, Sony developed the first portable solid state television of an, with an 8 inch screen. It was a 4x3. By 1964, million copies of those little portable TVs were sold around the world and television became a household item. Color television would follow shortly after and would revolutionize the world in more ways than we can possibly imagine. Now what happened in the 1950s and the 1960s is the studios, the film studios that were still operating on a 4x3 aspect ratio, a square ratio of film, said, you know what? No one's going to the theaters anymore. We need to create events, spectacles, and we need to create a new format that's going to break the mold and break, literally break the box of film. So they invented in the 1950s a number of cinema film formats that were codified as industry standards. So you had things like Cinerama. Cinerama was birthed in the early 1950s. A year after that, you had Cinescope, you had a number of other film formats. Now, if you've ever watched old films, you'd see at the end of the title sequence, it would say something like shot in Technicolor, filmed on Panavision, filmed on Cinerama. Now, what happened is the theaters up until that point had four by three square screens. So they couldn't actually, they couldn't project anything wider than just a square onto the screen. So the studio said, let's, do something significant that's an event, that's a corporate collective experience that's unlike a TV. A TV is a narrow field of view back in the day and you watch it alone. It's just you and your TV. It's only eight inches so you can't get more people around it. It's just this. It narrowed everyone's field of view and made it an individual experience. So the studio said, let's go in the other direction. Let's make them widescreen format. You had Panavision, for example, the 70 millimeter format, like you had Ben-Hur, Lawrence of Arabia in the 1960s were shot, and the aspect ratio went from a square format like this to a very wide ratio like this. Okay, so if you've seen any of these, you know, if you've seen Gone with the Wind or even the first animated film that was done in Cinescope in 1955 was Lady and the Tramp. It was a widescreen format. But the theater said, guys, if you're producing films on a widescreen format that breaks the box of the 4x3, we've got nowhere to screen these films. We don't have projectors or screens or theaters that fit these. And the studio said, you know what? That's a good thing. We're going to turn it into roadshow films. We're going to build the projectors and build the technology and the screens to, sh to project these in limited viewings in what we're going to call roadshow experiences. Now, Cinerama, for example, in the early 1950s that kicked the whole thing off, came up with a projection system with three projectors that would project three different 35 millimeter film strips on a bowed, bended frame. So you had three screens. So if you're in the theater, you could turn your head like this and look in either direction and the film comes around you. Now, I remember, I didn't grow up in that era, obviously, but I remember watching Lawrence of Arabia for the first time on 70 millimeter film in a theater on a, the projector that it was actually screened on in the 1960s when the film was released. I remember watching it being like, this is very different than watching a superhero movie in the movie theaters now. There's something, the, the taste, the flavor, the ethos, the excellence, the everything about it was just so impacted me. I remember being in the theater and I walked out of the theater after I watched that film. It's still one of my favorite films. I watched out, walked out of the theater and I said, why are we not using the most widescreen, beautiful, artistic format possible to tell the greatest story ever told? 
why is it that the Bible stories today that, that we tell are told like cheap Hallmark movies or they just are cotton candy or they change the story altogether? So technically speaking, Trinity Vision format is a very wide format, which is wider than the widescreen format in the 1950s and 60s. Our Trinity Vision formatting is 3.33 to 1 ratio, which is much wider than the field of view. And we'll put it on the screen here to show the difference. This is 4.3 formatting. This is Cinerama formatting. And this is Trinity Vision formatting. Because the stories, the landscape, the worlds that these stories inhabit, I think need to be viewed in the most majestic, wide way possible. Because, for example, show a shot of uh, Saudi Arabia where we film part of the film. Here's a shot of Saudi Arabia at 4 by 3 You just see this, right? But now expand the edges to Trinity Vision format. Now on a big screen, look how wide that is. So that's the technical level of Trinity Vision. Theological level of Trinity Vision, why we've birthed this format, in the spirit and uh, as a nod, so to speak, to the old uh, studios of old that birthed these new formats. We birthed this theologically because Trinity Vision films, over the next 10 years as we release these feature films and produce them, they're intended to be biblically faithful and biblically robust. These films, we're deeply committed to the scriptures. We're not interested in making entertainment or making films for the sake of making films. We have no romance with film as an end to itself. Film is a means to an end. And we want to, be, we want to take the greatest stories ever told, tell them in biblically faithful ways, and tell them in the most beautifully artistic, prophetic, excellent ways that we possibly can, painting them on the biggest canvas that we possibly can so that you can hear the sounds of it on the biggest sounds possible. Exodus, for example, it's almost four hours of music. Every single sound you hear in there was actually played by someone and was composed, all the orchestral arrangements, all everything about the film, the, the team that went into producing the music for this film is just staggering. It's not the kind of thing that you want to listen to it on the speakers of your iPhone while you're eating breakfast cereal in the morning, sitting in front of it watching it in 10 minute chunks. Don't do that. Theologically speaking, Trinity Vision films are biblically robust, biblically faithful films that are intended to tell the epic stories of the Bible in a beautiful way that can hold a candle to films like Lawrence of Arabia and Ben-Hur and Khartoum, Gone with the Wind, How the West Was Won, etc. Now, philosophically speaking, these films are designed for communal experience, not individual entertainment. It's a big distinction. Meaning if, yes, okay, if you don't have a screening in your area, no one's hosting one, and you don't have the ability to host one, yes, watch it in your living room by all means. But we want to encourage you to understand the intention of these films and to watch them on the biggest screen possible with really good headphones or a good speaker system. Because this is, you know, it's kind of like going to an art exhibition and looking at the painting from across the room with you know, in a poorly lit room where you can't really see the painting and you go, yeah, 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 I went to the exhibit. How was it? Eh, it was all right. You didn't, wait a minute, how close did you get? Ah, you know, it's like going to the Louvre or something, walking around with this incredible art exhibition and you don't actually look at the painting as the painter intended it. You look at it from far away, you look at it with blurry eyes and bad lighting. That's, the, that's the, the equivalent of watching our film on an iPhone without a good sound system. It, that's just not the way these films were intended. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can watch this on any device on a big screen. But philosophically speaking, these films are closer to art and prophecy than they are to entertainment. I mean, we, we want to take the testimony of Scripture in the most artistic way possible and put them in the, 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 the most uh, appealing, visually appealing, auditory appealing format that we possibly can. So technically, they're very wide. Theologically, they're very biblical. Philosophically, they're very communal, meaning don't watch these alone. These are intended to be watched in, with a community experience. And it's almost four hours long, which means you don't want to just watch this without arming yourself with a high degree of patience at the beginning and doing it with your friends, which is why I love the roadshow format of the 1950s and 60s. 
because you would come at 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon, you'd go with your friends, you'd sit down in the chair, you'd hear the musical overture, you'd feel what the, the, the mood of the film, and you'd open your eyes, the film would begin, you'd watch two hours, you'd go out for an intermission, you'd come back in, you'd take in the other hour and a half or two hours of the film, and you'd experience something. You're not, it's not for entertainment, it's an experience. Now people can say, you know, I know, I can, I can just anticipate all the crazy comments on YouTube of people hammering us for, for, for taking film seriously and saying, all we need is the Bible, all we need is the Bible, which I agree with, all we need is the Bible, but guys, we want to take the Bible and put it in the most beautiful frame possible, not because the Bible is any more or less powerful by film, but film helps get it out to the nations in ways that just standing in a pulpit on Sunday or writing a book and that's only on a Christian bookstore is going to do. The impact of that is incredibly small compared to what we can do with film, and that's the heart of the vision here. So with that, if you want to host a road show, which we want to encourage you to do. Again, I mentioned we wanted to host a road show all over the world before we released it, but COVID hindered us in that. So we're encouraging you to host one in your community, in your living room, in your local pub, in your local high school auditorium, wherever you can to get a big screen, a big projector and do it. So here's how it works if you want to host one. It can be five people, 500 or 5,000. Here's how you can host one. Go to the FAI app, and in the Ballads of the Exodus tab, scroll down and you'll see Roadshow Screenings. Click on the Roadshow Screenings, punch in your email, and two days before the film releases on July 9th, we're going to send you an, a number of different file formats of different sizes that you can download. And then you can play it in your whatever you need, whatever format you need for the environment that you're going to be filming it in or showing the film. You download it and we'll get you the file and you can you got two days to prepare it before it releases globally on the 9th and the 10th. We want to encourage you on the 10th of July, the 10th of July or the 9th, but I think, I think the 10th is better because it's a Saturday and you need to start this film early. So we're encouraging you the 10th of July to host a screening somewhere in an early part of the day, like a matinee. We just premiered it here in Tel Aviv. We started it at, I think, 1.30. It was over, you know, by, we were out of the building by six o'clock after all the mingling and the intermission and everything. And then we all went out to Tel Aviv and we had meals together and it was just a beautiful day, beautiful night. It was a community experience. That's what this is designed for. Now, maybe, you aren't able to host a roadshow or go to a roadshow screening of this and you want to just watch it in your living room but you feel frustrated because I'm telling you don't watch it on your iPhone but that's the only place that you have the app. You can take your app and use it on any device to play it on a big screen, be it a projector or be it on a big TV. Now you can download the FAI app onto your Apple TV, your Roku, your Google, whatever, all the different platforms. We've got links on the page down below where you can download the app from any platform to get it on your TV. Now you say, okay, Dalton, I don't have an Apple TV. I don't have this, I don't have that. All I have is a laptop and a TV. Okay, go to faistudios.org and on there you'll be able to click on the film, play the film, plug an HDMI cable from your TV, into your computer and it will put it up on your TV. Or you can mirror it from your phone or your iPad. If you have an Apple TV or these Google Chrome Fire Kindle sticks, I don't even know the name of them anymore, but they're like $20, $30, they're very easy to get. Uh, and you just mirror your phone or your Android and you play it on there and it will play it on there and put it on your TV. So any way you wanna watch it on your TV, you can. The app doesn't hinder you from watching it on, on a big screen. It actually helps you. But for hosting a roadshow experience, we're encouraging you to download the file. Don't stream it off of the app. Download the high resolution, biggest file possible because on the app, the, the version is going to be uh, more heavily compressed to be able to stream on the app. But we're going to give you the uncompressed heavy duty raw file in different compression formats for those of you who will be hosting roadshow screenings. So with that, guys, thanks for watching this. Um, I, I uh, hope you enjoy the film, but more than that, I want to encourage you, gather your community together, gather your friends together, and make an event out of this. And over the next few years, you know, this is, this is the beginning of a journey. Exodus is the beginning of the 
Trinity Vision Roadshow format releases, but in the years ahead, we're gonna be releasing a couple times a year films like this. So maybe time to go out and invest in a good projector and a good projector screen or find the best place in your hometown to do big screenings of these films in a roadshow format. Guys, thanks for watching. Bless you from the Golan and Maranatha.